there. My name is Dory. My birthday is May 13th. My favorite color is magenta. My sign is Taurus. And my blood type is A. Hold on. Okay, I get the first few things, but why is my blood type important? Wait, are you guys planning on draining me of all my blood and harvesting my organs? I knew this day would come. So I guess I'll have to explain the importance of blood types in anime quickly before Adrian pulls out the needles and the blood bags. By the way, I'm a platelet. Happy Halloween. Have you ever been curious as to why those profile cards in My Hero Academia list the characters' blood types, along with their birthday, likes, and dislikes? Wonder why it matters that Usagi mentions she has O blood in the beginning of each Sailor Moon episode? Well, you're not alone. Heck, even Stain from My Hero Academia is interested in blood types. His quirk, Blood Curdle, varies based on his enemy's blood typing. He's able to paralyze enemies with type B blood for a full eight minutes, but less time for type AB than A, and his quirk is the least effective on O-type enemies. Can you really blame me for thinking that anime has some sort of weird blood in Japan, actually most of Asia for that matter, people look at blood types kind of like how we look at zodiac signs. Ketsue Kigata, or blood typing, is a way for Japanese people to indicate or assess an individual's personality type. Each of the four types, A, B, AB, and O, come with several different traits. So if you're in Japan and someone asks you what your blood type is, it's kind of like if I were to ask you what your sign is along with your place of birth and exact time you were born so I can look up your birth chart and see if we could be compatible mates, get married, and have children. I'm an Aries moon and Capricorn rising, by the way. Also similar to Zodiac, there isn't really much scientific evidence to back any of it up, but it's still just a fun way to start a conversation and get some insight into why we act the way we do sometimes. Like, why am I so stubborn? Why am I so shy and reserved around new people? Why am I so confused and disgusted whenever I feel a genuine emotion towards somebody? This is becoming a therapy session. Blood typing and personality are actually so big in Japanese culture that they have a whole term for it blood type personality theory. Several women's magazines have horoscope-like sections, except with blood types. There are also dating websites entirely dedicated to finding someone with a compatible blood type to yours, since blood type personality theory is most commonly applied in dating. You can call me weird for saying that my heart will repeatedly punch me in the face anytime a cute Scorpio even looks my way, but some people will flat out refuse to date anyone who has B blood. Since blood types hold such important meaning in Japanese culture, it makes sense for them to seep their way into anime. Blood typing is so common in anime that there's even a whole anime based off of a Korean four-panel webtoon about anthropomorphic blood types. Don't believe me? Why don't you go Google Ketsue Kigata-kun? Each episode is two minutes long, it's really chaotic, and there are four seasons of it. Four. Four! Each episode of Ketsue Kigata-kun is really just a random scenario, and we see how each blood type approaches it differently. A-kun is serious and kind, but anxious. B-kun is creative and unique, but impulsive. O-kun is optimistic and romantic, but has a temper. And A-b-kun is cool and sociable, but aloof as hell. Shenanigans always ensue, and at the very end of each episode, a narrator basically says that it shouldn't be taken seriously, and blood types don't actually play a factor into personality. Just in case I, <coughs> excuse me, we needed a reminder. What do you say we take an even closer look into each type and find out which of our favorite characters fall into each blood bag? Let's start with what is easily the best blood type, type A. Yeah, it's because that's my blood type, I said it. However, I'm not actually an anime character. I just play one on YouTube. <laughs> your, your booing only fuels me. I can tell you about another young adult woman who's always screaming on the inside that has this blood type though. She's everyone's favorite depressed Sanrio office worker slash metalhead, Agretzico's Retzico. Retsuko is kind of the poster child for the A blood type, because people with A blood are known for being the hardest workers, responsible, and mild-mannered. 
people usually refer to them as kichomen, or well-organized. I think we can all agree that Retsuko is one hell of an employee. In fact, she works a little too hard and never gets the credit that she so deserves. She stays at her office well past closing time, she's quick to help out the newer employees, and she aspires to be like the badass business bitch above her, Gori and Washimi. She also puts up with, like, way too much of her chauvinist boss's bullshit, as well as her co-workers. Maybe she ought to stand up to them more often. Often. Oh, wait! She doesn't do this a lot because A types are also known for being very shy and submissive overthinkers. Well, this is suddenly becoming very eye opening for me. They will stay out of conflict mostly because, like Retsuko, they're too busy being in their own head, thinking about every little thing that could possibly go wrong that day since the coffee maker decided not to work in the morning and their friend decided to reply to their text with one single word, so suddenly they're thinking that that friend hates them and deadlines are coming up and the ecosystem is collapsing and. <gasps> So yeah, Retsuko, total A-type. You know who else is also an A-type and acts polite and timid? One of my favorite ahoge-bearing protagonists, Danganronpa's Makoto Naegi. Hope's Peak Academy's Ray of Sunshine, Naegi is a kind, gentle soul who only wants the best for his fellow classmates, even if it's at his own expense. He's also well-organized, seeing how he collects evidence in an efficient way anytime a murder occurs in the school killing game, and can clap back with a you've got that wrong anytime he gets a whiff of a classmate's lie. Let's be honest, if it weren't for Naegi, then everyone in his class probably would have died in less than 24 hours. Actually, not Kirigiri because she's the only one with a brain out of all those loons. You know someone who isn't mild-mannered though, or literally any of the traits of an A-blood type, but is still somehow, well, an A-blood type? Bakugo. I don't have anything else to add to that, I just wanted to mention that Bakugo has A-blood. He feels more like a B to me though. Speaking of which, let's move on to the Bs. Described as Jikochu, or selfish, they are known for being passionate, creative, unique, and fun-loving, which doesn't sound so bad to me. However, they're also known for being impulsive, forgetful, lazy, and of course, selfish. So, who is someone that fits the bill for this personality and actually has B blood, unlike Bakugo? How about Naruto? Naruto is certainly a unique character, and I think it is safe to say that he's very passionate about his goals and desires. His drive to becoming Hokage is a focus of the long-running series, but he also knows when to kick back and have some fun with his friends over a piping hot bowl of ramen. At the same time, he's a pretty forgetful dude, often requiring oversimplified explanations of things he doesn't understand. Relatable. He also failed to graduate ninja school like three times, which practically screams B-blood. Another unfortunate victim of B-blood is the titular revolutionary girl herself, Utena Tenjo. Oh, so that's why everyone wants to fight her all the time. Poor Utena. She may be well liked by all of her classmates, but when it comes to the student council, there always seems to be someone who has something to say about her. Maybe they're just jealous of all of her positive B-type traits, like her highly passionate nature when it comes to protecting the one she loves, or her way of presenting herself. Boy's school uniform, pink prismatic hair, and all. You could also say that Utena comes across as a bit impulsive, quick to assume how other people are feeling, and quoting Anthe is prone to misconceptions. This often leads her into trouble, like when she honestly believed that Toga Playboy f was her prince when he was really just trying to trick her so he could take the Rose Bride. I mean, come on, Utena. Never trust a Bishonen boy, no matter how pretty his hair is. Well, at least it's easy to tell how Utena is feeling most of the time, unlike her Rose Bride Anthe. Oh, what a surprise. It's because Anthe is an AB blood type. <laughs> Known to be the most mysterious of the blood types due to its rarity in the Japanese population, AB types are stereotyped as kawari mono, or eccentric. They often combine the traits of both A and B, and many would consider them to be just a wee bit two-faced. Ah, so they're the Geminis of the blood type world. Fascinating. Anime characters with this type are often complicated and strange, but they're also almost always pretty damn cool, so it makes up for it. Take Yukito from Cardcaptor Sakura, for example. There's probably a reason why literally everyone on the show is attracted to Yukito, and it's not just because of his silver hair or his warm, ever-present smile. There's always an air of mystery surrounding Yuki. Why does he eat so much and never gain weight? Why does he never seem to be worried about literally anything? Why does he spend so much time in Toya's bedroom? Well. I think I know the answer to that last one, but we already made a whole video about that. 
which you should watch after this. Anyway, as you keep watching the show and learn more about Yukito, his AB typing starts to make more and more sense. But that's reaching some spoilery territory, so I'll spare you guys those reasons. Instead, let's pivot to Honey Senpai. Oran High School Host Club has quite a cast of fascinating characters, and among those characters is the adorable Henny Senpai, whose entire existence is basically dual type. He's tiny and looks young, but he's the oldest of the hosts. He's airheaded, but at the same time, highly intelligent. He's a pretty happy go lucky little fella, but also possesses the rage of 1,000 Bakugos when awakened from his beauty sleep. There's actually a really funny moment in episode 12 where a couple of the other hosts convince Haruhi that Honey is secretly super evil and villainous because he's an AB blood type. It causes Haruhi to literally go meta and directly apologize to viewers with AB blood. I'm telling you, they take this shit really seriously in Japan. There are lots of other weirdos that have this mysterious type, like JoJo's Bizarre Adventures Giorno, Cowboy Bebop's Radical Edward, Sailor Mars. The point is, these are characters that I wouldn't f*** with in any way, shape, or form, because who knows exactly what they're hiding. Especially that Edward. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if Ed was actually immortal. Thank God O-Blood types are much more transparent. Last but not least, we have the O-Bloods. Personally, I've noticed that most anime protagonists fall under this type, which isn't too surprising since they're described as Rakan Shugi or optimistic. There's Spike Spiegel, Natsu Igneel, to name a couple. They're outgoing individuals, fairly easy to get along with, and they know how to roll with the punches without working themselves up too much. Oh look, I just described Deku perfectly. Get it? Because punches? Boo! Why are you booing me? I'm right! Sorry. <laughs> That's right. My Hero Academia's bushy-haired boy is indeed an O-type. Are any of us surprised? He gets along with pretty much everyone in Class 1A, and he never loses hope in becoming a hero. Even before he receives One for All from All Might, he makes for quite an impressive leader when the going gets tough, and leadership abilities are known to be common in O-types. After all, why would All Might pick a successor that doesn't display these qualities? You really think he was going to pick a <gasps> B blood type? Sacre bleu! You know, maybe this video is a bad idea because now I'm starting to take this too seriously. Speaking of leaders, as I mentioned much earlier in the video, Sailor Moon is also an O-type. However, Usagi displays more of the negative qualities of an O-type at least early on in the series. O-blood types can be so go with the flow that they end up being carelessly late to their responsibilities, most likely because they're too busy thinking about their romantic life. Usagi, I love you, but you can't keep getting so distracted by boys when you've got bad guys to beat up. You also can't get so mad whenever one of the other Sailor Senshi calls you out in your BS. I know it's in your O-blood nature to cause you to have a bit of a temper, but girl, Get it together and be the very best magical girl you can be. Okay, I guess she's not all negative aspects because she does have the whole endless optimism thing going for her. She does learn how to become a great leader eventually, uniting all of her Sailor Senshi friends and always saving the day in the end. Listen though, as fun as it is to psychoanalyze all of these characters based on what letter of blood they were born with, at the end of the day, this is really just meant to be for fun. Not all A-types are earnest hard workers, and not all B-types are lazy slobs with little regard for others. Sometimes a character's blood type is just there to be another fun fact, and other times it's there to give you a little insight into their personality. I hope you all learned something new today, because boy did I! If you found this video to be both informative and fun, give our channel a subscribe. I'm Gory, <coughs> I mean Dory, and thank you so much for watching Get in the Robot. Your anime explainer. You'll never catch me alive, nerds. This platelet's going rogue. Can they still see me?